A couple of weeks ago, we watched Metamorphosis the Alien Factor, which featured a rather interesting monster that some would say resembled the male reproductive organ. Now we're going to watch The Strangeness, which has a monster that resembles the female. Uh, well, you know. It starts out with two people going to a cave. They've been hired by someone to blow up the entrance in the middle of the night. Why? Well, I'm still not really sure, but even they know this is a criminal activity. Deep inside the mine slash cave, they find a cross, and for some reason, they think it's a good idea to pull it out of the ground. Why? This is probably somebody's grave. Would you pick up a tombstone? Well, when he removes it, the ground starts to shake and releases a monster. We don't see it yet, opting for the old camera POV shot, but it's a good way to get things started. Now we meet a group of people hired to go into the cave and look for gold, or something like that. I keep saying mine or cave, but really it's both. Just to clear that up. The entrance was an old mine, but while digging, they found a cave system and it opens up from there. Leader of this adventure is Jeff Calvert, the expert in cave safety. Followed by Morgan, who knows the cave system and the area like the back of his hand, Angela, a geologist, Dan Flanders, and his wife Cindy, who are writing a story about the expedition. And then there's Mr. Hemming, who financed this whole thing. Around the fire, they tell spooky stories and talk about how the cave is haunted and how the natives regarded it as sacred land. When the white man invaded, they tried to take over the cave, but time after time, something chased them all away. But that's just silly superstition. Our team is in no danger, right? The next day, they all head in, and, well, it takes a while. They show every person's descent until finally Dan is the last to go down. And just before he hits the bottom, something cuts the rope. Hemming said it was sheared on a rock, but this is too clean of a cut. Something deliberately cut it. But the bigger problem here is now they have no way out, except to go out through the other entrance, which is all the way on the other side of the cave system. About 30 seconds in, the group decides to take a break, and they find an old backpack that looks like it's seen some better days. Inside, they find some plastic explosives, but without the blasting caps, it's worthless. But they keep it in Dan's pack just in case. What are you doing? I want that stuff in my pack. What are you doing? Worried about this, Dan asks if he'll be okay. They say he'll be fine. The explosive gas is on the lower levels of the cave, and without the blasting caps, it can't go off. But this is kind of interesting, because this actually happened in real life. They film most of the interior shots in the director's grandparents' garage, but the exterior shots are a real mine called the Red Rover. The team didn't go too far in, however, which probably saved their lives, because about a month after shooting, some real miners went in deeper, and they all died of gas exposure. Anyway, back to the story, Cindy finds a gold ingot, which is interesting. They're down there looking for ore, not ingots. Nonetheless, Hemmings gladly says he'll take charge of it, showing how money hungry he is. Oh, uh, that was found on company property. It'll have to be returned to the company. I'll take personal charge of this. The geologist continues to go around getting samples of the rock, and she gets attacked. We get a quick glimpse of the monster, but it's not much. There's a cave-in, and the rest of the group tries to get to her. But thinking she died from the cave-in, they decide to allocate their resources to getting the living out of the cave, and not worrying about the dead. As they continue, they discuss all their options. One idea is to just hang tight and wait for help. Once the mining company realizes they haven't returned, they'd send help, right? Well, wrong. WRONG! 
we find out that Hemmings hired these people out of his own pocket and they're trespassing. He wanted all the gold for himself, and he didn't want to split it up with the company. So, yeah, they're screwed. No one is coming for them. The only thing to do is to continue on, and as they do, they find a room with glass shards all hanging from the ceiling, which is sort of an alarm mechanism. The old miners did this to know if something was coming. They would hear it, and unfortunately for them, this didn't seem to work out so well. They do notice that there's some wind, which would indicate an exit, but Morgan says the wind is coming straight from the depths of hell. One of the more creepier lines. Where's that wind coming from? Hell, Mr. Emin, straight from the pits of hell. The evil lives. Grow up! In one room, Cindy is taking photos, and she sees something with the flash. It turns out to be Angela, but she's covered in acid. Jeff explains that he's heard of this happening, but he's never seen it before. Sometimes they would use acid to eat through the harder rocks. This would eat through the floor, and I guess Angela stumbled upon a pool of this stuff. But we know better. This is no acid pool. This is the work of a monster. Next, it's Dan who's picked off. Jeff goes to find him, and when he does, well, he's stuck to the ceiling, covered in the acid. When hearing this, Morgan decides he's better off on his own, and he takes off running, only to get eaten by the monster just a little while later. So now it's just Hemmings, Jeff, and Cindy. But remember, Hemmings is money hungry, and you just know he's not gonna get away with that. Nobody's gonna get my... Nobody! He runs off saying, I gotta get out with my gold, like a greedy leprechaun, but what gold? That tiny ingot worth maybe 20 bucks? Well, he gets his comeuppets, and we get our first good look at the monster. It's all stop motion, so I gotta give him credit for that. So now Cindy and Jeff run right into the creature's lair, and we see the remains of all the others who have been killed down here. And here is where we get our monster shot. And, uh, okay, I see the resemblance to the female body part. Our hero finds the missing blasting caps and prepares the explosives. The duo jumps into the water and dives down just as the cave blows up, killing the creature. And Jeff and Cindy escape out into the open ocean. And that was the strangeness. And it wasn't too strange. I mean, sure, there's a giant vagina monster, and that's pretty strange, but the rest of it plays like a pretty standard horror movie. But I feel like they didn't take advantage of the setting too much. There's no claustrophobic shots, no alone in the dark with no light source. The creepiest it gets is those glass shards hanging from the ceiling and the wind from hell bit. This is obviously a pretty low budget movie, and it was made with friends. When you put it like that, the acting's not too bad, and the effects aren't awful either. There are times you can tell the rock is just part of the set, but I won't nitpick too much given the budget. And I love stop motion. Anytime you get that, it's a welcome addition. The strangeness doesn't stand out though, and I doubt that this is anyone's favorite movie of all time. It's a good one to play for a group of friends at a party, or maybe a late night horror show. I give the strangeness two and a half tiny gold ingots out of four. Morgan, what brought you here in the first place? A big blooming boat, mate. A boat? Yeah, best way to travel. <laughs>